Hey guys, it's Mudlin7 here, and today I'm bringing you Transfer Rumours slash Roundup episode 13. So without further ado, let's get straight into it, and the big, big move of the summer so far is Batuai. Now, this has been so surprising. Palace bid 38.5 million euros. That is crazy. That's, that's triple their record transfer deal. It just shows you how much money Premier League clubs have. Unfortunately for them, the player didn't want to move. He was linked to West Ham, but they weren't prepared to pay the fee. Same with Spurs, they weren't prepared to pay the fee. Chelsea, on the other hand, out of absolutely nowhere, bid €40 million, Euros, which equates to about £33 million. Pounds. I mean, that keeps going up and down. Like I'm checking because I'm going on holiday later this month uh, for the Euro conversion, uh, like the, the conversion rate from pounds, and it keeps going up slightly, down, down, up. Oh, it's horrible, but uh, anyway... It's roughly about 33 million at the minute. So uh, he did his medical yesterday. I believe uh, the Belgian manager gave him some time off. Obviously, they play Wales in the quarterfinal to finalise his move, presumably sign the documents, and it should be announced in the next couple of days. So um, a very young, talented prospect of a player. And of course, if he performs, no one's going to care what the fee is. It's if he doesn't perform, then people start questioning the fee. So uh, we'll have to wait and see how he does for Chelsea but I think it's a good move next we've got a manager who I haven't really heard of I'm not even going to try and pronounce pronounce even though it's only a four letter name but it's spelled p-u-e-l so is it is it pule is that how you say it anyway um it's a relatively unknown manager to the Premier League um he's had a lot of French jobs I think uh the best thing I've seen is uh Sky Sports said in 2010 or 11 he led Leon to the Champions League semi-final now this could be another case of another brilliant manager that is relatively unknown being this success at Southampton and then maybe leaving for a bigger club like Pochettino did like Ronald Koeman did but we'll have to wait and see it could be another one of these managers that Southampton have uncovered and he does very well so uh, I don't know too much about him but excited to see what he can bring to the Premier League Next player we've got is, an, is a player I don't know, and it just literally got confirmed within the last hour. Lies Mousse, I think uh, for Bournemouth, 5.4 million. That's about all I know about the player. And I'm sure a lot of people don't know who he is either. If you're a Bournemouth fan, let me know what do you think about this signing. Do you think he's going to be good for you? Next player we've got is a player I do know well and had high hopes for him. Thought he would be a big player. And unfortunately, it doesn't look as though it's turned out that way. And that is Hulk, who's basically about to sign for a Chinese Super League club for about 60 million euros. He's on 20 million euros a year, so he's basically doing it for the money. And he's went from Porto, promising, to Zenit. And then you think maybe he's going to take another big move like Chelsea, Arsenal, PSG, someone like that. No, he's went to China. So unfortunately, uh, well... His career has kind of, you know, just just proved that he was in it for the money, which is a bit disappointing. And uh, yeah, we'll see what happens with that one. Next, we've got three players who one has signed, one's done a medical, and one is heavily linked. And they are uh, Sells all to Newcastle. Uh, Sells to Newcastle is done. All I know about this player is that he's a goalkeeper who had a team of the season on FIFA. And I'm quite surprised Newcastle have signed another goalkeeper that looks as though he's going to want first team football. He's not going to be happy with a backup spot because of how good Carl Dorlo was last season. Tim Krul, I think, is in the last year of his contract and it's heavily rumoured he's going to go to someone like Everton, uh, a Premier League club. So it makes sense for them to sign another goalkeeper, but I thought they'd sign a backup one rather than someone who's probably going to want to be a first team goalkeeper. But it seems as though it's going to be a good signing for them. Um, next, we've got a £13 million bid that was accepted for Dwight Gale of Crystal Palace, of course. Medical was done yesterday, so the deal should be done in the next one to two days, I would imagine. And the next player is also Matt Ritchie, who is, uh, I think the bid is around 10 to £15 million, And it looks as though he's set to go to Newcastle as well. So two Premier League proven players there and a player who had a stunning season for Ghent last season. And we can all agree that that is because of Rafa Benitez. They're able to get these players. And their odds of coming up straight away are drastically improving because of Rafa Benitez and these players that they're set to sign. So, yeah, things may be looking up for Newcastle. Ne Sorry. 
Next player we've got is Lucas Moura. A player that keeps coming up on Football Whispers, that thing that Sky Sports have. Of course, I get a lot of my info from Sky Sports, but I also look on Twitter uh, to people I follow who have news from Lequip, obviously Demazio, Build, other foreign outlets that usually get news a bit quicker than Sky Sports. Of course, a lot of it is bullshit, but as always with media, but a lot of it is true as well. But this Football uh, Whispers thing seems to always have Lucas Moura in the top 10 um, rated transfers that are likely to happen. Now, I think this is a case of if they didn't get Sadio Mane, they would have went after Lucas Moura. I can't see them going after him. I mean, they've got Mane, they've got Firmino, they've got Coutinho and Sturridge. When all four are fit, they are going to be their attacking players. Of course, you could argue that they need a bit of depth. So maybe this, this is a signing purely for depth. And um, it would make sense. But I generally just can't see it happening now they've got money. If it does, then it does, and I'm sure it'll be a good buy. But uh, for now, I don't think it's going to happen. Next player we've got is Ben Arthur, heavily linked to Sevilla. Until Emery, their manager, went to PSG. Now he's heavily linked to PSG, so it seems as though Emery really wants this player. He's also linked to Leicester, to Lyon. But I think he'll, he'll choose PSG. It'll be done soon enough. And uh, yeah, it's Lequip that are reporting this who are very reliable when it comes to French players and it looks as though PSG are set to win the race for Ben Arthur and that's probably in part to the club but because of Emery as well, the manager. Next player we've got is another French player, Umtiti. The Barcelona president has confirmed that Lyon accepted a 25 million euro bid and the player is set to sign for Barcelona. Uh, I think that's originally 5 million more than they wanted to pay but they've they've got their man and that, to be honest in this market that's relatively cheap for a uh, a promising young centre back, and uh, they definitely needed one. Bartra left, so they they filled in a void. I know he didn't play much, but Matteo wasn't really amazing for Barcelona last season. So Umtiti, I'm sure he'll do well. His development will, well, obviously be helped at Barcelona. So I'm excited to see what he can bring for that team. Next, we've got Nani linked from Fenerbahce to Valencia, heavily linked for about 6.5 million euros, I think. Um, that's that's cheap. I think that's cheaper than what they paid uh, to get him from us. I think they paid 8.5 million euros. But anyway, looks as though Fenerbahce want to get wages off the bill. Uh, they're also set to release, well not release, but sell Van Persie. But there's no link clubs as of yet. When there is, of course, I'll put him in this uh, in this series. But Nani to Valencia, it's a move that works for both players. I think. It's a, it's a good move for Valencia and I'm sure Nani will gain a lot at La Liga and he'll, he'll excel in that league like he has in the Euros. But for some reason, I don't really want to talk about Euro 2016. I can't think why, but I just don't want to talk about it. Like, does it even exist? I d I've never heard of Euro 2016. Anyway, next we've got an assistant manager, Ryan Giggs, who is set to end his 28-year spell at Manchester United. I loved him as a player, but the one thing that annoyed me a little bit when he was assistant manager is his sense of entitlement. He thought he was entitled to get the Manchester United manager's job after three years as well under two very underwhelming and failed managers. And um, I know that's not primarily Ryan Giggs's fault, but obviously he he's he's been assistant manager, so he's got to take a portion of the blame. And yeah, his sense of entitlement is a bit annoying. Like just because he's been at the club for so long and he's been an icon as a player, doesn't entitle you for the job. Especially when you've got someone of the calibre and the managerial the pedigree of Jose Mourinho, who thankfully we did sign. We just can't take a risk. We've been poor for three years, and we can't take that risk of a of a manager that we we would love to see be a success. Ryan Giggs, you know, another twenty. 30 years like Ferguson gave us that would be terrific as manager of Manchester United but fairy tale stories like that don't often happen in football so you need to go and build yourself up get the managerial pedigree and who knows in 10 15 years maybe sooner you you could be Manchester United manager and it, it could be like one of these fairy tale stories as I say that uh, he becomes a very successful man uh, manager of Manchester United I'm sure me and most of the Manchester United fan base would love that. But as of now, we just can't risk that. And I think it's better that the player goes off 
well, he's not a player anymore. The 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 assistant manager hopefully will become a manager, get some managerial pedigree, get some success, and then reevaluate the situation in a few years. But on a side note, he's also taken a punditry role at ITV for the Poland versus Portugal game. I think. I hope his aspirations are a bit more than punditry. No disrespect to it, but I think he could be a successful manager, and I want to see him prove himself. Like it, it would just be really nice to see him doing well as a manager and uh, yeah we'll see what happens next player we've got is Christian Benteke linked to Crystal Palace doesn't seem as though Jürgen Klopp likes this player in his system anyway so this seems like a, a deal that will happen Crystal Palace are prepared to pay money as, we, I've, as we've shown uh, so far Bacuasi uh, it's not Bacuasi, Bacuai so this is a deal I think will happen um, within reason, obviously, they're going to pay what Liverpool want, but it just seems like a perfect move. Uh, it, it, Benteke won't be under as much pressure at Palace. He'll be able to do what he did when he was at Aston Villa for Palace, in my opinion. So, yeah, I reckon this is like nailed on to be done. Next, we've got some updates on some players. Schneidlin, Lequip have said that the player doesn't want to leave Manchester United. And um, as I say, Lequip are very reliable when it comes to French players. And uh, yeah, it seems as though unless Jose Mourinho wants to sell him, he will not leave Manchester United. And I'm happy with that because one underwhelming season, especially when Van Hal's the manager, doesn't mean much, to be honest. And I think he could rejuvenate himself under Jose Mourinho, even if we get another centre midfielder. Speaking of centre midfielders, that we're linked to, Paul Pogba. Now... The benefits of a move that basically I don't, I don't think it's going to happen to Manchester United but the things that give me hope are Jose Mourinho for one the project that he'll probably be telling Pogba that he wants to you know build at Manchester United he wants to be a success and also Mino Raiola his agent we're set to sign Mkhitaryan and Ibra two of his clients as most people know so the relationship with the agent is a big factor because if he speaks to Pogba and tells him the terms, etc. He could persuade him to move to Manchester United. But in my opinion, I think he'll go to Real Madrid. There's reports that Florentino Perez isn't really keen on him, but Zinedine Zidane really wants him, the Real Madrid manager, and I can just see it happening. Like I think Pogba idolises Zidane. I think it was his idol. So it could happen. The only slight hitch... That Real Madrid might have is financial fair play. They might have to sell either James Rodriguez or Morata to fund a move because they're using club. They're not using club money. They're using Florentino Perez's money. But the worst thing that could happen under FFP is really a fine. So I don't think that's going to hinder the move too much. So I do expect him to move to Real Madrid, but I'm hopeful that he'll come to Man United. Those are the only teams that seem to be realistic. For Pogba, he'll either stay at Juventus, go to Man United or go to Real Madrid. So we'll have to wait and see. Next, we've got Ibra, who should be done tomorrow. Like the, the medical, the documents, the contract, the, the press photos, all should be done tomorrow. And if, with any luck, it could be officially announced by the club on Twitter tomorrow. They're going to want to do it as soon as they can. It's a huge name in world football, but likelihood is it'll probably be Saturday that it's officially announced he'll do his medical and everything tomorrow as Demazio says and assuming there's no hitches it'll be done at the very very latest fully confirmed by Sunday and uh, another player Mkhitaryan um, the Dortmund CEO basically confirmed that he's well circumstances have changed in his own words and the bid that Manchester United made has been substantially increased so there's reports of it being 26 million uh, pounds, 30 million pounds, whatever it is. It's one of the best players we could get that we need. We need a player who's creative, who's got pace, who's attacking, who's got a good shot, who's got good vision. Just a perfect fit for us. And this is one of the best available players we could get. Like, I'm not saying available, like just one of the best players we could get for a fit for our system. Like he's a perfect Jose Mourinho and Manchester United player in my opinion so I'm delighted with this and uh, the Dortmund CEO said he'll talk about it in the relative parties on the weekend so either Saturday or Sunday he'll give the go ahead presumably and then Mkhitaryan will be free to fly to Manchester complete his medical do the documents sign everything and if with any luck it might be officially announced on Sunday if not 
then early next week at the latest so probably wednesday next week at the very latest hopefully as long as there's no hitches so we'll have two brand new signings two huge signings that we need fully done and dusted before we jet off for the tour one side note we've also got one extra game against galatasaray um which is in sweden and uh yeah that might be the clearest indication Manchester United have given that we're about to sign Zlatan Ibrahimovic, give him a, a send-off in Sweden because obviously he's retired internationally. Oh, and one final ridiculous transfer that we can never shake. We, without fail, for the last 10 years, every single transfer window, we've been linked to this player. And I just don't understand how. 10 years ago, I'd have loved him because he was amazing. Wesley Schneider. But now, no chance. But Galatasaray, it's being reported, want Fellaini, and they're going to offer Schneider as a part exchange, which I'm sure we'll refuse instantly if that happens, because we don't want that player anymore. Like, eight, ten years ago, yeah, we would have loved him. Of course we would have. We went for him, and I believe the rumours then, but every single transfer window, without fail, we get linked to Wesley Schneider, and it's ridiculous. But anyway, hopefully you have enjoyed. Subscribe if you haven't already. Like the video, and yeah, peace.